We are now starting our session. The topic is sacred music and its various aspects in Ukra Ukrainian music history. We have three papers, each of which covers broader areas of the history of sacred music and its performance. The first paper is about the early notation of music in the Slavic area, about Greek Byzantine notain notation and its origin and tradition in Ukraine. The topic is complicated uh, because the notation was very dependent on regional and uh, ritual traditions which were or could be assimilated. At the same time, all traditions were developed. Our first speaker, Evgenia Ignatenko, is an expert in both Ukrainian and Greek medievistic paleography and so studies. She is assistant professor at the Tchaikovsky National Music Academy of Ukraine in Kyiv. She had numerous research and lecture visits to Greece. She is a member of the International Music Society Study Group Music of the Christian East and Orient and of the Aristotle University of Thessaloniki Study Group for Paleography of Byzantine Music. She is a science advisor and lecturer of numerous projects, Laboratory of Musica Sacra Ukraina, Vertep, Neo Baroque Mystery. In collaboration with Nina Gerasimova Persitska, she edited pastoral concerts, uh, Partes concerts of the 17th and 18th century from the Kyiv collection. We are looking forward to listening to your presentation. Greco Byzantinsky Gerela Ukrainsko Cerkovnoho Spiu, Greek Byzantine Sources of Ukrainian Church yeah. Chant. Good morning. First of all, I'd like to thank to our organizers for such a nice and very important event. <clears throat> so, Greek Byzantine Sources of Ukrainian Church Chant. The early periods on the musical uh, history of Ukraine are insufficiently studied for objective reasons. In Soviet times, church music didn't belong to the priority scientific areas of musicology. Some archives were closed, scientific works were censored, and performing church music could cost a career in a state with an official atheist ideolo ideology. There was also an ideology regarding the cultural and historical development of the brotherly people of the USSR, according to which the history of Ukrainian music began in the 19th century with Mykola Lysenko. Its old roots, Baroque and classical periods, were included with certain comments in the history of Russian music. In such a difficult ideological and political context of Soviet Ukraine, a systematic study of Greek Byzantine sources of all truth and Ukrainian church chant was impossible. Therefore, the musicologists of independent Ukraine have to solve a complex task to work with gaps in Ukrainian musical history, as well as to refute Soviet musicological schemes offering a historically reliable interpretation of already known facts. The main purpose of our paper is to show how the history of Ukrainian church music can be enriched with new names, facts, and contexts. Kyiv, the capital of modern Ukraine, was the political and cultural center of the ancient state of Eastern Slavs, known as Kievan Rus. In uh, 988, Prince of Kyiv, Vladimir the Great, accepted Christianity from Byzantium. In, eight, uh, in 987, he sent his ambassadors to the Bulgarians, German and Greeks, to choose a religion for his people. The ambassadors, who returned from Byzantium, spoke with delight about the beauty of the Byzantine worships. Quotation. We came to the Greek land, and they led us to where they sought their God, and we didn't know whether we were in heaven or on earth. For there is no such sight and beauty on earth, and we do not know how to talk about it. We only know that God is there with people, and their service is better than in all other countries. 
in the end of quotation. The Eastern Slavs adopted Christianity of the Byzantine Rite, but with the Church Slavonic language created by the brothers from Thessaloniki, Saints Kirill and Brasodius. Soon, the Byzantine music sounded in cave churches. In the Fourth Novgorod Chronicle, it's written, in 1051, beginning of the cave monastery of Anthony, and three singers from the Greek land came with their families to cave. Saint Anthony, one of the founders of the Cave Pichersk Monastery, began his monastic life uh, on the holy Mount Athos. According to legend, there he had a vision of the holy Theotokos, who ordered him to return to Kiev to spread the word of God and develop monastic life. All, dress, uh, all Druze church music is monophonic and organized according to the eight-mode system. All Druze pneumatic notations, both Znamena and Kondakarna, are typologically related to the paleo byzantine ones. Therefore, the origins and direction of development of the old Druze church music were of the Eastern Byzantine type. This direction of development lasted about six centuries from the 11th to the late 16th century. The late 16th, the beginning of the 17th century, became a turning point for the development of the Ukrainian and Belarusian church chant tradition. The most important sign of its renewal was a change of musical semiography. The five-line square cave notation gradually replaced the znamena one of pneumatic type. Uh, on the right, sorry, the slide on the left shows a manuscript sheet from the mid-16th century written with znamena notation. We can see three charts. Trisagion, uh, with the remark Holy God Greek, Svetei Bože Grecheski, Alleluia, and the beginning of Hierubic song with the remark Hierubic song Greek, Hierubic Grecheski, and with the intonation formula Neanes. On the right, we see a sheet from the Suprash Irmoloim from the end of the 16th century written in cave notation. Uh, there is a famous Constantinople Hierubic song with the remark Constantinople Hierubic song of the third mode translated into the Russian language from the Patriarch's Chante in 1583, September 8. Very beautiful. You can see this big inscription. <clears throat> the oldest surviving Ukrainian and Belarusian staff notated manuscripts of the late 16th, early 17th century, so Prasil Dolina and Lviv Irmoloya represent a monophonic chant uh, repertoire, the roots of which go back to the chant tradition of the old Rus. But they also contain new chants of Balkan origin, Bulgarian and Greek. Chants with the remark Greek in Greek appeared in Ukrainian and Belarusian church musical manuscripts in the 16th, 17th centuries and remained in the liturgical repertoire until the end of the 18th century. Not only remarks, but also the Greek verbal text transcribed in Kyrillic indicates the oriental origin of these chants. Uh, some chants have a church Slavonic text and only the remark Greek indicates their foreign origin. In the Ukrainian and Belarusian manuscripts, Greek chants were written not in Byzantine, but in Kiev square notation. You see this Constantinople Hierubic song, it's in Kiev square notation. Uh, not in Byzantine one. Greek chants from Ukrainian and Belarusian Irmoloya haven't yet been catalogued and published. There is a general catalog of Ukrainian and Belarusian stuff notated Irmoloya by Yuri Yasinovsky, from which the scholar should select information about Greek chants. Greek chants were not collected in the separate books. Manuscripts with traditional Ukrainian and Belarusian repertoire, not all, about 10%, altogether about 100 manuscripts, contain additional Greek chants. Most of these manuscripts have only one 
two, sometimes three Greek compositions. Trisagion, Cherubic Hymn, and Axionestin are the most common. However, there are few musical manuscripts with a dozen and more Greek chants. There are manuscripts of the monasteries in Suprash, Kuteino, Kiev Majigiria, Univ, Lavriv, and Manava. Until recently, uh, the question whether or not the chants with the remark Greek from the Ukrainian and Belarusian Irmoloya are really Greek remained without answer, as they are all anonymous. As a result of our comparative study of Ukrainian, Belarusian, and Greek Byzantine manuscripts, we attributed a significant number of Greek chants, in particular the colophonic works of the prominent Byzantine composers of the 15th. Uh, 13th, 15th centuries, such as Ioannis Hlikis, Ioannis Kladas, Manuel Chrysafis, and less known, such as Monik Longin, Joachim Harsenitis, Manuel Hazis, and Ansimos Lavriotis. Kyrillic transcription of Greek texts of borrowed uh, Greek chants, typical for the Ukrainian and Belarusian musical manuscripts, indicates that scribes and singers couldn't write and accordingly read Greek. Despite this, they didn't replace the Greek text with its Church Slavonic translation. Singing in Greek had to demonstrate their belonging to the Byzantine religious and cultural heritage. The attribution of Greek chants showed that Ukrainian and Belarusian singers preferred the works of the early Byzantine composers rather than their contemporaries one. Ukrainian and Belarusian manuscripts of the late 16th, 17th century, centuries include the works of Greek Byzantine composers of the 13th, 15th centuries. On the one hand, this fact proves their long-term popularity in the Greek East and in the territories under Byzantine religious and cultural influence. On the other hand, it is a marker of a certain liturgical and stylistic selection, since there are colophonic compositions of the divine liturgies, uh, which are uh, the most important and the most difficult. What were the reasons for it? The colophonic style of Byzantine church chant was formed in the era of uh, the Paleologian Renaissance, under the influence of the Hesychastic theology. It can be expected that the genetic connection between Calophonia and Hesychasm was preserved when Byzantine Calophonic works enriched the Ukrainian and Belarusian church repertoire. Indeed, the Ukrainian historians noted the significant role of Hesychasm in the development of Ukrainian spiritual culture of the 16th-17th centuries. The influence of the Hesychastic ideas is traced in works and activities of Ivan Vyshinsky, Yov Knyaginitsky, Yov Pochayevsky Zhelizo, Isaki Boreskovich, Kepriano Stroisky, Univ Archim Andreit Isaya Balaban, Kiev Metropolitans Yov Boretsky and Isaya Kupinsky, and others. Yov Knyaginitsky uh, founded the Manyava Monastery, the Galician Great Skid. Those musical manuscripts contain the richest collection of borrowed Greek colophonic chants. Our attribution of Greek chants from Ukrainian and Belarusian staff notated manuscripts proved their eastern origin and the fact of borrowing. The question arises where Ukrainian and Belarusian singers mastered Greek Byzantine chant. It's logical to assume that the Greek repertoire appeared thanks to Ukrainian and Moldavian contexts, since the Moldavian chant tradition is based on the Byzantine one. The works of Greek Byzantine composers make up most of the repertoire of the 16th century Moldavian manuscripts. Thirteen of them have been found today. Uh, we can see it on the slide. Our comparative study showed that all attributed Greek chants from the Ukrainian Belarusian Irmoloya, with the exception of Gazi's work, are found in the 16th century Moldavian manuscripts. In the process of working uh, with the Greek repertoire, we also found out that the Greek language hieroglyphic song of the plagal first mode 
of the outstanding Moldavian composer Yevstati, the Protopsaltis of Putna, of the monastery Putna, was recorded in Ukrainian and Belarusian manuscripts. Yevstati's work was included in the cycle of Californian Hierobic songs, along with the works of Ioannis Vlikis, Manuel Chrysafis, and Anthimos Lavriotis. Now uh, we can listen uh, to this piece of Yevstati. Uh, recording was made by the Hyro Deacon of the Putna Monastery, Pater Avram Bohu. Comparative study of attributed Greek chants notated with Middle, middle Byzantine new methods and cave staff notations showed that the Middle Byzantine notation was decoded by the five line K1. Deciphered works of Byzantine composers are their exegesis, their performance realization. The colophonic repertoire was recorded in Ukrainian and Belarusian manuscripts as it sounded. Thus, key exegesis of Byzantine music is a valuable historical evidence of the performing practice of the late 16th, 17th century. The attributed Greek language chants from the Ukrainian and Belarusian Ermoloya have the following features of their mode organization. The Byzantine notion ichos was replaced by the Slavonic notion hlas. More definitions are often absent. There are discrepancies in the mode definition of the same work recorded in different manuscripts. Indication of the mode offered in the Ukrainian and Belarusian manuscripts are often erroneous compared to the original definitions of the work's mode. For instance, the previous slide, we saw the work of Yevstakia, the Prechenker of Putna, and uh, we know it was written in Moldavian manuscript in a plios of Protos, uh, this uh, the plagal of first mode. And in Supras um, Irmoloyan, uh, which we see on the right, we, uh, we saw the indication uh, without composer's names, but indication glass uh, two, Defteros. Uh, Defteros uh, second, second mode, in second mode. So the discrepancies in mode definition, it's um, uh, it's a main feature. In Greek, Byzantine, and Moldavian manuscripts, uh, there are no chants without a mode definition. Discrepancies in the mode definition of the same word recorded in different manuscripts occur in the Byzantine tradition also, not so often as we see in Ukrainian and Belarusian manuscripts. But most indications of the studied works offered in the Moldavian manuscripts are the same as in the Greek Byzantine manuscripts. Therefore, the Byzantine modes were reinterpreted by Ukrainian and Belarusian singers. This is a, spe a special feature of the Ukrainian Belarusian reception of Greek Byzantine chant. Our next observation concerns the composer's attribution of the studied works. As we have already said, in the Ukrainian and Belarusian manuscripts, the names of the composers were not indicated. Uh, 
In Moldavian manuscripts, the names of the composers were indicated, but not always. For instance, in many manuscripts, <clears throat> is Mnemosion and Aonion of Manuel Chrysaphis and Communion Chan Potirion Sotirio of Ioannis Kladas became anonymous. We see the name of Joachim Harsianitis near his communion, Enitid and Kirion, in only one manuscript, in the rest it was written anonymously, and sometimes under the name of Moschianos. So, the names of composers began to disappear in Moldavian manuscripts, and in Ukrainian and Belarusian manuscripts, all borrowed works became anonymous. The method of adopting the Greek repertoire in Moldavia and in the Ukrainian and Belarusian lands are very similar. For instance, uh, the Sunday communion in it on Kirion of Joachim Harsianitis and the Wednesday communion Potirion Sotirio of Ioannis Kladas were recorded in the Moldavian anthology as anonymous and with two texts in Greek and in Church Slavonic. The Church Slavonic text adopted to the chant was not a translation of the Greek text. Discrepancy of verbal texts is a typical feature of bilingual chants recorded in Moldavian manuscripts. Examples of such a practice were found in the Ukrainian Manyava manuscripts. The Saturday communion verse in Church Slavonic, Blazhen Yazhe Izbra, was ascribed under the Greek text of the Manuel Chrysaphis Sunday Communion, Enitet and Kirion, in the Manyava Ermolion of 1685. The common Greek repertoire of Moldavian and Ukrainian Belarusian manuscripts, as well as the work of Eustachia recorded in Ukrainian and Belarusian Ermoloi, testify to the direct connection of Moldavian and Ukrainian Belarusian church chant traditions and prove that the Moldavian musical school, which flourished in the 16th century, became an intermediary in the involvement of Ukrainian singers in the Greek Byzantine chant tradition it had a powerful influence on the development and renewal of Ukrainian and Belarusian church chant in the late 16th, 17th century. So, with our attribution of Greek Calophonic chants, the history of Ukrainian church music has been enriched with new facts, names, and contexts. Thank you very much.